I don't know about y'all, but the daylight saving stuff has absolutely ruined my day. I mean, like we 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 lost an hour, and then I just oh, this my 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 day has just been destroyed. But then it was capped off with a mild positive. Um, at halftime I fell asleep, so um, when I woke up at like seven, um, I just I just I just watched the rest of the game because I had it recorded so that's why the video was so late even though I had the day off I just f fell asleep at halftime but that's not even there uh welcome back to Nets Republic I'm your host Sever the Bond they went out there oh wait forgot my bad my bad my bad my bad my bad forgot we were doing the delusional thing okay um can I be delusional and still fall asleep like what are the rules on being delusional I don't quite know but that's not the end of there um, they beat the Nuggets, and it was a very profound victory. Now, it wasn't like we blew them out or anything like that, but there were moments where they were playing very, very well, and much like in our last game, it all came down to the wire. We didn't have to do it in overtime, thank God, but it all came down to the wire, if you will, to, to the limit, to the wire. You feel me? Like, it all came down to the final moments. Everyone was playing out of their mind. Jacques Vaughn was out there playing chess with the lineups and such. There were times where I'm sitting there like, well, like, where's Royce? And then here comes Royce. And I'm like, well, where's Claxton? And here comes Claxton. You, you know, let's, let's, let's feature Finney Smith more. If he wants to mess around and hit shots, you know, here, here goes more three-point attempts from Finney Smith. Like, everyone played absolutely incredible and went down to the last moments. Um, Jokic, who had been offensively fouling all night on some Julius Randle, if you know what I mean, just elbows and, and push-offs and shoves and chicken wings for days, and they don't call a single thing. I don't think the Nuggets received a single foul called on to them as far as them committing a foul until the very, very, very end of the fourth quarter. They went the entire fourth quarter almost without being accused of fouling, which I found insane. Normally when Spencer Dinwiddie is moaning and complaining about something, I'm just like, well, this guy's just a jerk. But today he had some valid points. I mean, they were smacking Buddy around and he was doing a good job because it's like when the shot's not falling, what do you do? You run in the paint and get fouled. And how long have I been asking someone to do that. I mean, not since Harden have we had a guard who understands, hey, if I'm running the team and no one else wants to step up and shoot and I got to take over, I'm going to run in and get fouled. But they just weren't giving them the whistle, which was just weird. The, the, the officiating was nuts. I mean, like they wanted Jokic to win so bad. But anyway, Jokic was handing out the elbows and the mutton chops and all that. And it came down to, I believe, Royce O'Neal was guarding him one-on-one -on -one in the post, Jokic turns, tries to shoot, bounces off the front of the rim. Bruce Brown tried to, you know, knock it in, but it would have been a goaltending even if it went in. No, uh, uh, offensive interference, excuse me, even if it went in, but he missed because Jokic can't shoot, and a lot of people kind of don't talk about that a lot. Like, yeah, he's got the bully ball down low, and, you know, he can shoot foul shots allegedly, but when it comes to, like, actually shooting the ball, like, y'all think he's LaMarcus Aldridge? Like, no, he's not. Like, like that bone can't shoot, but that's not good. I'm like, honestly, if I'm the defense, and I'm, like, tall enough and, like, strong enough to keep him out the paint, I'm making that bum shoot. I'm treating him like Giannis, but that's not the end of there. Not that they play the same, but you get what I mean. I'm gonna force that man to shoot and then we'll talk about it, but that's not the end of there. And for, again, the three Denver Nuggets fans who are going to be down below saying, Hey, you didn't know anything about Jokic. You didn't know anything about Jokic. You didn't know anything about Jokic. Let me tell you something. If your nose turns... I don't think I can say that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stop what I was about to say because I'm on Nets Republic. But trust me, if this were the set of the Bond days, I would have got a very nasty takeoff. But that's neither here nor there, and I ain't talking Migos. Um, y'all. One thing I would like to highlight: one, holy crap, we beat the Nuggets. I thought it was gonna be a wash. That's part of the reason why I fell asleep because I was like, well, they're finna lose anyway. Let me go get some rest real quick, but. The fact that we won is insanity. I didn't see that coming. I know I'm doing the delusional thing right now, but I legitimately and realistically did not see that coming. That is incredible. The measuring stick game to me was the T-Wolves, but if we're beating the Nuggets, y'all, and we're doing it with what I've kind of been asking for this whole year, 
you know, investing in true small ball, especially if we're really only using Claxton, you're using Norland's Noel very sparingly. We don't see Daron Sharp anymore, thank God. There's no more Ben Simmons because he's nursing his face to help his knee and his back, but that's not even there or whatever else is going on with that man. Um, so we're utilizing a lot of small ball techniques. And, 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 and if you remember towards the beginning of the season, I talked about how I'm a little bit of a small ball connoisseur, if you will. Over the pandemic, I made a lot of videos breaking down what the Houston Rockets were doing after they traded Clint Capella. It was very fascinating stuff. And it seems like we're implicating a lot of that on the team. And Jacques Vaughn is doing a wonderful job of, you know, getting everyone to buy in as far as the hustle and the energy and the scrappiness you're going to need to play that style of basketball. Finney Smith played incredible all around. Obviously, he hit threes, which is what we need. But the defense, when he was occasionally up, because we switched so much, so kind of everyone played well on Jokic, but specifically when Finney was on him, I thought he did a wonderful job, bunch of steals, uh, loaded up the stat sheet, not in a stat padding way like Jokic does, but lo loaded up the box score in ways you can physically see the impact, but it's the things that don't get recorded that he does that I think are just incredible. Now, he might have a silly foul every now and again, and he might get a little trigger happy from three, but overall, I, I, I thought he played incredible. And I think what we really needed was for there to be a distinct leader. Now, obviously, the best player on the team Head, head, headband off, I say it's Claxton. Headband on, it's, 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 it's Mikel Bridges. So obviously we have a best player, but then we have the leader. And those are two completely different things, right? Now in the ISO heavy pass that we just came from, it was just give it to the star player and get out the way. But now that it's a bunch of role players, you're seeing the pecking order getting established to where it's like, okay, if y'all aren't going to come through, who's the dude who's going to say, all right, give me the ball and get out the way. And that's Spencer Dinwiddie, and he's making the right decisions. The first couple of games, I was like, what are we doing? Right about now, maybe it's the chemistry. I don't know what you would call it, familiarity, whatever. But that man Spencer Dinwiddie is playing really, really well. Not just from the fact that he understands, since he's surrounded by role players, he's got to be the guy that says, okay, give me the ball. I'll figure out what we do. But he's making the right decisions. Not just hoisting up shots because he feels like he can make it. He's cut down on the random like half quarter attempts. He's playing a lot better and making the right reads and passes. He was talking to Megan at the end of the game about how he like drives in the paint and they quote unquote blitz him. So he was making the right pass and trusting his teammates to hit the shot to get all the assists he got. I believe he got like a career high 16 assists or something of that nature. He played out of this world. And I think, I think, I, I could end up being wrong, but I believe that the leader of the team is Spencer Dinwiddie. He's the one that's going to lead us to wherever it is we go. Now, the star of the team, the, the, the poster child, is going to be Mikel Bridges. And Mikel is really good. Not as kind of aggressive in late game situations as I would like him to be, but it's cool that he defers to Spencer. Because, you know, that, that, that might be what's best for the team. In a league where everything is so guard-centric, maybe it's better this way to have a dynamic point guard that can score and make the right assist. So maybe it's better that way. And obviously, Mikel is a role player, so he's used to kind of deferring and just like, okay, what do you want me to do type energy? You know, he was playing with Chris Paul and Devin Booker. So it's like, he's already used to that type of thing. And maybe as a point guard, that's what Spencer Dinwiddie was thinking. Like, okay, everyone around me is used to kind of huddling behind a playmaking decision maker. So I need to step up and be that. I can't speak to, Sp to what Spencer was doing before, you know, the, 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 the ACL tear and when we traded him for basically nothing. I can't speak to what he was doing before then. Because when I started covering the team, I'm pretty sure he was hurt. Because I don't think he went to the bubble. I don't think Spencer was in the bubble. I don't remember Spencer being in the bubble. 
And then he comes back and like on Christmas, he tears his ACL. So I've seen very little Spencer Dinwiddie. So I can't speak to what he used to do, but whatever he was doing in Dallas, whatever he was learning from Luca, it seems to be working. And I am, while not a fan of anyone on this team outside of Claxton, Royce O'Neal, surprisingly Joe Harris. I know I talk a lot of trash about Joe Harris, but I kind of mess with Joey on the low. But with the exception of Claxton, Cam Thomas, and Joe Harris, and Royce O'Neal, I'm not a big fan of the team as far as the people on it, but I am perfectly fine with Spencer making the decisions, with Spencer being the leader. With Mikel, it's like... <laughs> But if, if, if Spencer's going to be the one to do it, if he's going to keep making great decisions with the ball like he did tonight or this afternoon, then I'm fine with that. And I can, I, can, I, can, I can slide into the delusional role a little bit smoother. I trust Spencer Dinwiddie to make the right decisions and make them the, the right reads. And while... I'm not all the way convinced Jacques knows what he's doing. Because again, like in the third quarter, when the lead was starting to get away from us, Jacques like did the thing where he used two timeouts consecutively and then he didn't want to run out of timeouts. And they were, I mean, just piling on the points in the third quarter. And it's like, man, if only we had a timeout. So like there, there, there are certain things here and there. I'm not convinced Jacques knows what he's doing. The team's winning, so clearly he does. You know what I mean? Clear, clear, clearly something's working. Clearly something is something good is happening. But I really think Spencer Dinwiddie might be one of the biggest reasons. Because again, post Harden, we haven't really had someone out there that's not like either they've got a tinfoil hat on and they think that that like pollution makes you know, frogs like the same gender or something like that. Or we've got a point guard who just just isn't aggressive at all and passes two. And I'm not going to go into any more descriptions of the two guards I just named. I think it's funnier when I'm just vague and y'all piece it together, but that's not here or there. But what I'm saying is it's, 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 it's nice to be back to a point to where we have a guard who's controlling things, who understands what to do. Right? Right? Okay, I'll explain it. That was that was Kyrie and Ben Simmons, right? Right? Tin foil hat, turn the frogs. Yeah. Alex Jones reference. Not very aggressive passes too much, Ben Simmons. I I, I thought that analogy was really, really funny. And I don't I don't think I'm gonna get the love I deserve in the comment section for it. I thought it was pretty funny. But that's not in there. We won. And if we're beating the Nuggets, <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. If we're rallying together to beat the Nuggets and the refs, because really it was a tag team effort. It was the refs, the horrible DJ, and the Nuggets. And the altitude, we'll throw the altitude in there too. They, they, they might be up to some. I, 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 I go, I go say the championship word, but the news is up to some. Okay, I, 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 I'm not at the point where I'm ready to predict what they're gonna do, but y'all. They might be up to something. I'm definitely not afraid of the Cavs. I can tell you that right now. The jury's still out on the 76ers. I was really brave and bold last video like Batman, but I need to think about that just a little bit more. But um, I'm definitely not afraid of the Cavs. Let's look at the standings. I believe our next game is against a team that's not very good. So we shouldn't have to be too concerned about that. I think it's like, what, the Kings or something like that? And not that the Kings are bad, but it's like, if we beat the Nuggets, we can beat the Kings. Uh, who do we play? It's, oh, it's OKC. Paycom Center? When did they change it to Paycom? I thought it was like the Chesapeake Bay Arena. Anyway, um... Yeah, we should have no issue getting past OKC. They've got a much better record than I thought they would, but we should have 
no problem with that. And once we do that, then we'll make our 40th win. So we're still kind of on track to be a pretty good team. Uh, then after that, I believe, is the game against the Kings. But let's look at the Eastern Conference. This is super random, but do y'all think labs look like pit bulls? Like baby labs. Do you think they look like pit bulls? Because I, I think they do. It has nothing to do with anything. I just wanted to share something with y'all personally. I like to share personal things to make the experience more, you know, mm-mm. Garrett, you know, mm -mm. You know what I mean? Mm -mm. Anyway, uh, so we're in fifth. The Cavs are a couple games ahead of us, but I mean, I'll take fifth. Ain't nothing wrong with fifth. Who's under us? Uh, the Knicks, then the Heat, then the Hawks. Hawks kind of keep losing. The Heat are moving up. Raptors trying to do something. Yeah, it will be fine. Yeah, being in this, being in this either five or six thing, I think that's a safe place to be. We want to do our best to avoid the top teams and the mid-tier teams were better than. We just, you know, needed the chemistry to get there. So let me know your thoughts on the game down below. I um I'm trying to be delusional, but the realistic sever is like creeping out here and there. But I I I I still feel pretty positive overall. Again, we beat Denver in Denver. That's pretty good. And we have Royce O'Neal guarding, who's probably going to be the three-time MVP, which, I mean, I, I don't really see what he's doing to warrant such an award. I, I, I think Joel Embiid's better personally, but that's not a unit there. But anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm Sever the Bond. You are here on Nets Republic. I will see y'all Tuesday night, super duper late, to talk about how we... Curb stomped OKC. See you then. Yeah.